Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. Oh yes, today have we got a video for you girls. So in my Discord, we have a lovely member called Danielle and she shared a video with me with the most disgraceful title I have ever, ever heard in my entire, entire life. And I just thought, oh my goodness, this has to go into my botched beauty series because I cannot believe that this is a thing that is happening that I don't see anyone talking about in the beauty world. Do you see anyone talking about this? Let me know if you do, because I was gobsmacked to know that women in Congo are injecting chicken stock to get a bigger butt. What? What is happening? What? Before I even watch any of these videos that we're going to talk about today, I would like to preface this entire video with please do not get black market injections of any kind, whether that is silicone or chicken stock, sis. Don't get chicken stock or gravy or granules or bloody Yorkshire puddings injected into your butt. Please don't do that. In fact, anywhere in the body, don't inject this stuff unless you're eating a tasty Yorkshire pudding. Don't. Stop. Immediately stop. So I've been doing beauty commentary for a little while now and I literally, every time that I come across a video or a scandal girls that people are talking about I just have to have a moment to myself a moment did you hear my voice crack then a moment to myself to just go why are we so obsessed with killing ourselves why is humanity so obsessed with creating its own biggest filter to survivability why is this happening good question sis should we watch these videos today? So I have a little feeling that this video that I'm, we're about to watch might actually be um, copyrighted and I have a feeling that my video might get copyright stricken if I use the exact audio. So the first clip that we're going to watch is called Homemade Butt Injections. And it's by Viceland, and I have a feeling that they're gonna be like, No, Luxary, you cannot react to this content, naughty lady, stop being so naughty. So I do realize that the word Ohrhänge is incorrect, and that the German for earphone is in fact Kopfhörer. A friend told me about it. Women here don't want to be skinny. It makes them feel bad. If a woman is the only skinny one in her group, she might look around and start asking questions. That's how she discovers the Maggie Cube trick. Maggie, the Ma Maggie Cube clip. The Maggie Cube trick. The, the Maggie Cube trick. The Maggie Cube trick. Sis, do you know what a Maggie Cube is? It's a stock cube, sis. It's gravy. I knew we were going to watch footage of someone potentially, you know, undergoing some sort of DIY butt injection situation with gravy. I didn't realize it was gonna be like a name brand, like the Maggie Cube trick. What's next, OXO lip fillers? Don't even think about it, I know you are. Stop it, stop it now. No, say. Even I found it difficult at first, but because I really wanted it, I did it. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my Neither. God. Oh my God. Okay, so she's putting water no, in. No. It's tasty. It makes food taste good. These women that use Maggie believe that by anally injecting the dissolved cubes, the ingredients will be absorbed locally, will cause the tissue of the buttocks to expand. What? Okay, this is... So, this was a bit different than I thought it was going to go, actually. For some reason, I thought that it was going to be injected into the body. I didn't realise that it was going to be taken as a sort of suppository. Um, as a sort of, as you say, you would with a, um, like an enema or something like that. I was really, I'm fully surprised. Like, I just don't know enough about this. Like, why are you doing this? So, the idea that I've got from just this one minute in so far is to insert it um, into the anus. And then somehow it creates... It's absorbed locally into the butt and then creates a bigger butt. Um, I don't think. I would probably kneel like this in this position, then insert it and pump it in, and then repeat with another syringe. The doctor advised me never to do it and that there are risks involved. Some doctor knows what he's talking about. First of all, so that little clip, oh my God, what? So it doesn't seem to be as bad as I thought it was. I thought it was literally going to be like, they mix up a stock cube and inject it into the site. I didn't realize it was going to be taken as some sort of suppository situation that's meant to plump the area. Um, unless you are literally somehow anally taking um, hyaluronic acid in massive doses and that somehow is going into the body through the rectal wall and then somehow staying in place, I do not know for a single second how this would possibly ever work. So I can tell you for like anything that the only reason why this would ever create a plumping of the area is through irritation. And you don't want that part of your body irritated, sis. No, you don't. 
No. So the next clip that we're going to watch is called Women in Congo are injecting chicken stock to get a bigger butt. And this is by African Diaspora News Channel. So we're going to watch this. If you want to watch any of the clips I featured today in full, feel free to click them in the description box below because they will all be there. My goodness, they will all be there. Okay, let's watch this one, shall we? This young girls believe that there's something wrong with them and uh, they want to do something by all means necessary. And the issue is they don't have enough money to do that. So if they don't have enough money to do that, they'll do whatever it takes to get that body. Hello fam, <sighs> welcome to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Ongil Zalalem bringing you this report. In Congo, a woman with a huge butt is seen as more attractive and beautiful and this perception has led many women in the country feel the need to fit into the standard expectation of beauty. This is one of the stories that you hear all of the time around the world, especially now in the Western world as well. So these women are really separated from the identity of their body type and they're sort of told time and time again that the certain features on a woman's body are more attractive and more desirable to men and therefore that's what they should strive to do. Now, if you don't know, cosmetic surgery and plastic surgery are incredibly expensive procedures to look up to. I myself am not a stranger to a little bit of cosmetic work. I have had my hairline done and I have had many fillers in my face. While I understand that it is an expensive procedure, the reason why it is expensive is because the surgeons that go to school to learn these things, and by, by that I mean you have to go to good surgeons and good practitioners for this, good doctors please, research your doctors first. The reason why it's so expensive is because it takes so long for them to train to get that experience and that knowledge that they aren't just going to straight up inject something that's going to kill you. That's what costs money. So the idea that there is even an alternative looking for like cheap silicone injections, put this vegetable oil into your lips. Don't do any of that sis. Don't do any of that. Don't stop doing it immediately. First of all, the patriarchy needs to be smashed. Stop telling women what they need to look like in order to feel feminine, beautiful and attractive. I understand that I myself want to face your feminine surgery in order to alleviate my dysphoria. That is my decision, my decision alone. Do not go and tell other people that they need to have specific procedures done in order to feel or fit a certain idea of what is beautiful in this world. Don't do that! So toxic! Get away with you! I mean, it's kind of a moot point for me to address this to my audience because my audience are, on the whole, incredibly accepting and very sensible. And I know that none of you would ever willingly go onto someone's page and be like, Oh my god! You need to get bigger butts! Why don't you put this chicken stock cube directly inside? I know that you wouldn't be like that. So you know what? Maybe I am. I'm just shouting into the ether a little bit here. So what they do is the chicken stock is crushed and liquefied into a thick paste which is then poured into a syringe. The woman successfully get the mixture into their body by anal injection. It is believed that the stock causes the tissues in the lower body to swell up and provide a thick bubble to look better. Oh my god, this is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard and stats show that uh, it is way more dangerous than uh, the normal augmentation that you see that uh, people go through um, when it comes to plastic surgery. So this one is double the risk and on top of that they do it in their homes so you know if anything goes wrong there's no emergency care um, they're more likely to lose their lives or you know be disabled and this is crazy especially coming from Africa because most as you know like African women are known for you know their bigger bottoms and uh, that's one of the things that you know um, the waist copied and then now you know it's a trend. So I'm gonna stop this woman here for a second because I don't understand how um, well okay let's first of all talk about a few things in this in this this whole concept whatsoever, because it's kind of taking me through a loop. I was expecting something else to what I've actually seen. So this is where in which I get a bit confused as to what this lady has said. I don't understand how people are dying from putting chicken stock into their bodies via the incorrect uh, passage, shall we say. I wouldn't understand how people are dying from that or becoming disabled, because unless you are storing it in your body for a long amount of time, your body's going to get incredibly uncomfortable and wish to expel it. So in any medical care, and when it comes to, um, that area of the body, should we say, abdomen care, most of the time if you're doing anything to do with the intestines in terms of surgery, you will be asked to uh, douche, to basically take a uh, medical grade enema and to make sure the whole, your whole system is empty and clean. The idea that then these people are saying that you can die from this and the risks are twice more um, deadly than those when you just have the normal augmentation procedure. The normal augmentation procedure for uh, 
a bigger butt, shall we say, is for fat grafting or for a BBL, and that stands for a Brazilian butt lift. Now, a Brazilian butt lift is where they take, um, it's basically liposuction from an area of the body that is a lot, that has a lot more uh, adipose tissue, so that's areas like the stomach, and they literally inject it in specific areas, in a specific pattern, mostly into the butt and the top of the thighs in order to give that real hourglass figure. Now, there are a whole plethora of problems that come along with a BBL, and it is a huge undergoing of a procedure. It can take years to heal from it. There is no way in hell that essentially douching with chicken stock is twice as dangerous as the BBL procedure. I'm sorry, I do not agree with that. I don't think women are going disabled from doing this. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna double check myself and just do a little bit of research right here. Let's type it into Google and find out what comes up, shall we? Here I have just found uh, an article on Facebook that is also by Vice and by Broadly and here is a doctor that's going to explain to us the side effects of using Maggie cubes to uh, create a bigger, rounder butt, shall we say. I am interested to know what this doctor will say because I'm very confused as to how this can kill someone. Okay. Okay. So she's leaving the house. Okay, here we go. On a beaucoup de problèmes liés au Rectal diseases, okay. Des problèmes liés aussi à Fertility issues, really? Ce problème est en même temps culturel et Cultural and contextual. Culturel par rapport à l'image que l'on se fait de la beauté. La danse, les musiciens ayant l'habitude de montrer les femmes grasses comme étant celles qui donnent envie. Être gras, c'est donner l'image de quelqu'un qui se suffit. See, that also didn't answer my um, question. I find this very strange because um, as a scientist, I don't really understand what would be killing these women or making them disabled from this. So the idea that they say that there's a link of rectal diseases, I can understand that from a point of inflammation, depending on how often these women are doing it. Let's just say, for example, they do it three times a week over the course of 20 years, shall we say, that that will expose the tissue in that area to an immense form of irritation, which could indeed link to perhaps forms of colorectal cancer and uh, other forms of inflammation in the area, which could in fact lead to infertility issues. So while I understand that, I don't understand how they've come up with this exact link because I haven't seen any data from my Googling and from my investigation, my personal investigation of this topic to give that idea. But I will say to you 100% do not go out do not mix up a stock cube and do not put it into your butt. Please, don't do that. Sis. No, it's a bad idea, very bad. No, they don't do it. So, my lovelies, that was a weird little trek down um, some sort of investigation that I didn't expect to be doing. I always find it fascinating how there is always an extra added layer of stories when it comes to this sort of a stuff. And I also feel like when it's a story that revolves around culture or whether it revolves around women of a certain culture doing something, I feel like there's always a white woman that goes in to investigate these practices and it's always very, like, expert revealed like it blows it into proportions that make us as westerners go <sighs> can you believe such things are happening no never that being said i do feel like you should not be putting a stock cube anywhere else except in a nice gravy mm. Let me know what you guys think about this story in the comments box below. I don't believe there'll ever be a scientific study into the case of whether stock cubes do in fact give you a larger posterior because I don't believe that any respectable scientific committee would ever give it funding to do that. To research that and to come to a conclusion, I just don't think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments box below because this is an odd topic. It took me to a place I was not expecting, sis. And also if you know of any other botched surgeries or botched situations that you would love me to investigate and cover on my channel, please also leave them in the comments box below. <gasps> yes. Today's Instagram shout out goes to underscore a dot fox dot underscore. Thank you so much for following me over on Instagram, you stunning woman on the go. If you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next week's Instagram shout out, make sure to follow me over on Instagram. Yes. Don't you start with a still sore as I'm just about to finish filming. Don't you start. Don't you do that. No, stop doing all that immediately. Awful. Absolutely not. 
I do apologise if suddenly you can hear a still sore. I must get this out. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons you can see on the screen right here. And a massive hello and welcome to Amy Thiss Jazzin, Erin aka Queenie, and Winnie Fan. And a massive shout out to my top two patrons and channel members. Stephanie Neotupski, Morrigan E. Wolf, Erin Conkle, Magusta Lagoose, Steph Utec, Caitlin Wright, Megan Holly, Dana Broderick, and the Mouldy Apple. Thank you so much for following, you gorgeous people. And with that, my lovelies, I'm going to get very irate with this man outside with his still saw. But I will see you in the next video. Why now? It's like 6pm. Don't you people? Mm.